welcome back to another quick tip tutorial this time I will show you the V-Ray material so I have a scene set up in Maya and I will be using V-Ray as my main renderer so I have a really basic scene and a back, um, background plane which is curved a bit to get some smooth transitions then I have a ground plane which is just tiny bit above um, the, the background wall and I have my sphere <coughs> where I will show you my material settings then I have set some lights, some rim light some fill light on the, from the side and one headlight which is um, very low intensity and then I have my V-Ray settings but I don't want to go into that for this tutorial, I just want to show you what the V-Ray material does. So I went to uh, assign new material and chose the V-Ray material right here, this one. <clears throat> and I called it V-Ray Hero. And these are all the standard settings which comes or which are enabled by default from V-Ray. So looking through my camera the view looks like this and on the side here I have my render view and I chose to render with a V-Ray frame buffer so when I cho choose IPR with the render cam you see what my interactive render looks like now first show you how great this interactive tool works you can just change a color right here and it updates pretty immediately which is really fun for working. Then what I forgot to say is my in my render settings I have a HDR environment loaded up here, which you can see when I quickly enable my reflections. You see this is like a like a white room with some lights and lots of reflections. So first to start, I have also a loot file in here. It's almost the same as the sRGB button, but with a gamma of 1.8 instead of 2.2. I like to use the 1.8 gamma because it doesn't wash out my image that much. So to start, this is the diffuse color of your material, where you can change whatever color you like. And then you have the color mount, which is like in Photoshop, the or the yeah, let's say the opacity of a layer. You can turn it off, then it's black because you, the default color for a V-Ray material is black. So you can change the amount of the color which is contributed on your material. And this is just the color as, you, as I just showed you. Opacity map is you if you want to have a cutout material, for instance a checkerboard. So you can see my IPR it just um, makes it transparent on, I think it's the black objects. Let's quickly confirm, yeah. Black is transparent and white is opaque. Now we come to the reflection part. The BRDF type is the reflection, um, let's say the reflection parameter. If you set it to Fong, it's more like a metal or like a high glossy. Blin is like a standard metal and Ward is like a brushed metal, very smooth surfaces. Mostly I leave it to blend because you can get everything out of that too. I leave the color for the default gray and now we move to reflections. So if I turn on my reflection color to white, it's 100% reflective as you can see in my IPR. The amount is the same as in the diffuse color, it just tints the or changes the amount of reflection. You could say it's the same as the color but it isn't because in the color you can also say it's a red reflection color then it looks like this and in the amount you can also import import um, a ramp or something but that's for a bit more advanced so I leave that to full and now we come to Fresnel reflections every material has Fresnel reflections except highly reflective objects like mirrors or chrome and stuff so if you want to create a metal or a wood or whatever, just use Fresnel because it looks way more realistic. 
on the sides of the mesh you get lots of reflections and on the center of it it's not so much so it, there's a fall of, of reflection and you can you can um, adjust the amount of fall off if you change the Fresnel amount which is now locked because it is always linked to the reflection index of reflection which is below here but if you know you won't use reflect a uh, refraction you can just uh, lock or unlock or uncheck this box here and then you have the full control in the reflections tab and now you can see there's still a little bit of fall off but not so much anymore so to get a better understanding I quickly just turn that off to get a full reflection and now we move to reflection glossiness this is the surface of the material how the light is being reflected so when it's very high glossy at the amount of one you have a very crisp and smooth or surface where you get the exact reflection back if you re reduce this amount your uh, you s your surface gets rougher and rougher so the reflection won't be that smooth and crispy as you can see they get now washed out so the more I lower this the more washed out my material gets which also affects render times a lot the more you, you reduce this value the longer your render times will be but you get very realistic looking materials for that so I, I tend to use Fresnel as I just said and keep it mostly around 4 for simple metallic objects and now I reduce it to 0.8 something like that and now you can see how that looks like it's a bit too much now 295 maybe it's a bit dark in here so I just increase my headlights 2.8 oh, let's say 2 then so back to the material the reflection subdivisions is how smooth your render will be if you leave it at 8 it's most of the time very low if you have a lower reflection glossiness so it, you have to amp it up to get a smooth glossy reflection um, <clears throat> if you want to create a, an isotropic material just increase this amount and you get like a brushed metal effect you can also change rotation as you can see the the twirling here of the reflections it looks like it's really a brushed metal but it's also very time con uh, render time consuming so if you don't need it just turn it off now I'll just quickly go and show you how, how the bump maps interact which are below here, bump map map and then you can just, I just use a simple fractal quickly and you can see the bump map is being applied, it's way too rough now I just increase the repetitive ok, there you go, it's like it's an, uh, it's very smooth or small the surface and in the material attributes under the bump multiplayer this is the amount how intense the map is if you bump it up it looks really not so nice I always use it as a very low number to get some subtle subtle um, dense in the material as you can see it's very small and dense now it's maybe even still too much. Now it's a little bit better. It's very subtle. I'm even not sure if you can see it on in the tutorial. Let's turn down the glossiness a bit. There you go. Now you can also tweak the color of your material. And that's more about and that's the simple or the standard settings I always use for changing attributes on my materials 
So for instance, if you want to create a glass shader now, just assign a new material. And glass has usually no color, so it's black. It has a full reflection, and it uses also Fresnel. Then you go below to refraction. It is fully refractive, so you pull, uh, turn that to white. Make sure you have this one on, so the Fresnel of the reflection is the same as the refraction. So if you want to create water, put it to 3. And this is how it would look like. You can turn it even up more to get a inter more interesting effect. And then the effect shadows changes the shadow color to what, how the light is passing through it. So it would be also a lighter color. Dispersion is the... If you turn that on, it shows your light spectrum of your material. So if the light passes through, the light gets broken up into its initial or default colors. But it's very render intensive. So keep in mind, if you want to go for a very, very realistic shader, if you turn that on, but it's also, as I just said, render intense. If you want to create a like a glossy gloss, or a sandblasted glass, you reduce the reflection, a uh, refraction glossiness. Okay, now I want to show you how to create some nice procedural reflection maps for your ground planes or whatever for a realistic looking material. So I assign a new pure shader to this one. And now I first tweak my ground settings, or I just make this like a chrome wall. I don't want to change that much on this one. We work now on the ground plane. Also standard shaders on here. And now I turn on my reflections for the ground plane. As you can see some reflections coming up here below. Now it's fully refractive, uh, reflective, so it's like chrome, but I want to turn on for now. Change my ground color to a bit darker one, so you can see nice reflections coming up. And I want to change my Fresnel to, let's say, 5. Okay, if you insert a map to your reflection color, you get like a, a ground which is some ways more reflective and some way not so much. So if I add a fractal map to it, you can see now at the, on the ground looks like it has some patches of full reflection and some patches of not reflections. As you can see it looks like a bit more like a ground surface. And if you change that amount you can get some interesting results if you increase the repeatment so you get a more dense fractal effect on the ground. And now if you add a color on the effects insert a color remap and change this uh, on black and white, so it's like the same as it was before. But if you change now the white color, I always get confused. So if you change the black color to a whiter one, or fully white, you get a full white reflection color, which is 100% reflective. So if you lower this, you can see how splotches are being created here but very subtle, what you want. So you can see there's now more reflection and a little bit less. Something like this looks neat. You can even see in the ball reflections that there's some patches now in here. So I quickly open up my hyper shade. Shade, which is on the second monitor. Okay, I want the fractal latest, this one, fractal 3. I want it also in my bump. So I middle mouse click it. 
So I middle mouse click it in my map. And then you can see we have now a bump map in here, which is the same as my reflection and my reflection color. So it matches pretty good, but it's way too heavy now. So reduce this to point two five. If it's if you don't like the amount of reflection or if it's too too less reflective, then um, you have to increase the this color to a more whiter one or you go in <laughs> or you go into your Fresnel effect and turn this one like let's say to 50 then it's more like a mirror effect now and then you can see nice patches coming up let's just for instance change the color to a Bluish one. Okay, now I started a render in full resolution. You can see now at the bottom where the bump map is um, adding to the material. You can see reflections, and where it's uh, minus one, you can see uh, that it's not reflective anymore. So you, you get a nice rough surface and you can see in the reflection of the sphere how it looks like. And you can also see now my reflection map which is now a bit better to see than a small IPR preview window. <coughs> so, it's uh, so it's really straightforward to change the settings and the viewer materials. It's very easy and probably not so difficult than something random man or I hope I could give you some small help on setting up materials maybe if you have some suggestions for new tutorials or new help videos let me know I can help you hopefully thank you guys bye